it finally happened. It was kind of inevitable, I suppose. Someone in our family came down with the COVID. Tested positive, had many of the symptoms. Our main concern was with their health and well-being, of course, but it was also a time to carefully consider our plans and what we would do next to not potentially infect others. A real good quarantine on the boat was in order. But being stuck on the boat, we wanted to capitalize on this time to try some new things. We've been living in Mexico on and off for quite some time now. We've adapted to our hot environment, taking advantage of the hot sun to prepare much of our food. Two days since we've been living in Mexico for the last few years, we've been eating a lot of tacos, pretty much exclusively tacos, all kinds of variations, but it's always been a variation of tacos. We've kind of taken this opportunity to finally take the courage to, to make something a little bit more different. We're trying different recipes. We haven't had a chance to try to make ourselves. We've made a lot of flan recently. We found out that the flan in the soy cocoa works really well. Or like I like to call it creme caramel. It's almost like creme caramel. It is creme caramel. It's the Spanish version of Creme caramel. It's a Spanish word for creme caramel. <laughs> it's a creme caramel. Flan begins by finding some good vessels to cook, cool, and eat the dessert out of. We melt the granulated sugar in a pot over the stove. Don't be fooled into adding water to make it melt. Adding water is not needed. The sugar will simply melt when it reaches temperature. Stir until the sugar browns lightly. This is burning sugar but only lightly. You will have to have your trays ready to dole out the caramel before it starts to solidify. The cake, or the batter of this recipe, consists of a can of condensed sweetened milk, an added can of water to liquefy it a bit, four eggs, lime zest, and a pinch of vanilla. This made more than enough liquid to fill both our solar cookers. The cooker was out in the full afternoon heat. This would not take very long to cook, but we do need to take it slowly and carefully when loading these cookers, not to splash or spill the trays. The butterflies had the same idea that we had that day, to keep hydrated and to proceed delicately. The finished flan should be strong enough to keep their structure when jiggled lightly, and they are best enjoyed after spending a night in the icebox. Luckily, what coincided with our quarantine cookathon was our viewer Sean giving us our trusty pressure cooker here. This is a specialty item that I would categorize in the same realm as our solar cooker. One of these kitchen items that we don't see a lot of other people using. I, I guess the title would be weird items for the kitchen that nobody else seems to use but we love. I think pressure cookers are one of those things that can seem kind of intimidating to people but we use one safely each and every day. This is kind of a no-name brand version. Robbie's Italian speaking side of his family always used the Lagostina pressure cookers. This is a Turkish brand for half the price. Pressure cookers are basically a normal pot, except you'll find that they're a little more beefy around the rim on the inside if it's a good pressure cooker you'll have a gasket. This gasket will keep in some of that extra steam and heat and heat up your food extra quickly, extra vigorously. You've got your fancy dancy lid, which locks down. You have your three or four safety valves. If it's overpressurized, that extra pressure can be released. First, you have your red valve, 
which pu pushes up pretty easily at a first level of pressure. Then you have your second valve, which is a little more effort to put to pull up. That's a second level of pressure. And you also have on this side a similar valve that pushes up. This is also a pressure valve that can be released manually if it's done if your food is done cooking and you want to release the pressure. So we have our valves and safety valves to release various levels of pressure on this pressure cooker and we have the lid which tightens on Our bean recipes always begin by washing and soaking the beans. We sometimes add salt and baking soda to the soak. We sometimes soak overnight outside of the fridge, or if the temperatures are too high, we soak them in the ice box. We simply soak with tap water, but for the cooking part, we use drinking water and a pinch of salt. Check the rim so that nothing can get trapped in between the lid and compromise the seal. We like to seal the lid perpendicular to the handles so that we can't accidentally flip it open when grabbing the pot. You can start on medium to high heat, or if you have a little more time, just start it on minimum and stay there. When you're done cooking your beans, you can wait a couple of minutes for the little red pressure indicator to fall down. You also want to be extra careful about pressure having been released. You can lift this one with your utensil. That'll let more pressure out and you want to be extra safe. Finally, you pull this one up as well. And all three valves, if they're indicating that there's no more pressure left in the pressure cooker, only then may you release the lid. Robbie has many different spice and veggie mixture bean recipes, but for today we are making them to put inside our tamales. Mulatto and ancho chilies are very similar because they're big and fat. We've got our little chipotle chilies, which are very small but very good smelling, very smoky smelling, and the pasilla chilies, which are long and skinny. Our tamales will require soaked corn husks and soaked dried chilies that can be found in abundance here in Mexico. We figure it out only after the fact that seeds can be cleaned out before soaking, but cleaning them this way also worked. Nobody got too hurt. Without gloves, your hands will burn. I'm basically making a chili sauce and a broth for my tamales, simmering the garlic, onion, veggie broth, and chilies all together until everything is tender. hand process the chili sauce and use some of that extra broth to add to my masa, which is the tamale corn flour dough. It's a little bit too full. And this is a beautiful chili sauce. Masa, or corn flour, salt, oil, and broth in the bowl, slowly adding water. I did not add enough broth or water to my masa mix. I learned that it sucks up the moisture very quickly. I want my dough mix to spread onto the husks like a nice creamy butter. And that's definitely not what happened at first. This is the best cheese. I have to stop myself from just eating it as it is. Cheese and beans. We wanted to start out our tamale making career slowly and simply. To steam the tamales, I was going to be using the pressure cooker pot again. 
We don't have a steamer, but a slightly smaller pot lid propped up on some rocks would do nicely here. Don't forget to have a bit of water in the bottom like we did, and then pressure cook it all up for about half an hour to 45 minutes. When they're finished cooking, you really have to give your tamales time to cool down, otherwise they are liable to fall apart. The first batch tasted great, but they definitely needed some work. We tried again with some smaller, daintier corn husks, and figured out that the husks need to be cut into shape a little bit to accommodate for the masa better. The second time, we also added some of that same chili sauce inside to spice up the flavor, and made the masa a little bit more wet to spread. The second try turned out even more tasty than the first. Finally after quarantine and testing, Robbie and his crew hauled in a couple of good fish. You don't drink any of the nice, fresh drinking water. Instead you drink this bloody fish water, a beautiful little mackerel, and some bonitos for us to keep the bigger tuna would go to family and friends. Not a single parasite, nothing they have. They're really nice. No parts wasted, including the belly, fins, and that big juicy fish head. Great for making soup broth. Been really good, doing good today. We decided to wait an extra half hour or so that it takes to not have to use propane and prepared the rice in the solar cooker, making this a completely solar made meal. I think our favorite way to prepare smaller and more delicate fish is in this manner. The solar cooker tends to retain most of the moisture inside, so fish comes out juicy and never dried out. Oof, it's super hot inside. It is possible to overcook fish in the tube. It finishes cooking in no time. Solar cooked fish, solar cooked rice. It's about mm. 500 degrees in here, so it's necessary. Mm, totally solar cooked meal. Delicious. Cheers from this place which is a zillion degrees inside and outside and enjoy your sun-scorched meal wherever you are. <laughs>